Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to The Discount. Today is Thursday. Happy Thursday, March 16th, 2023. And as always, kicking off with a daily chart of the spiders, the SPY, the S&P 500. We have a lot of stuff to go over today, um, and we'll do so in short order. I don't think it will take too much time. However, a lot of stuff is signaling that we are potentially going to resume this bull trend. And we are just reading the charts and we're looking at what's happening. And what I've been saying, obviously, you have the big downsloping trend line. It's bearish below. It's bullish above. You have this head and shoulders pattern that the target on a measured move is 365. And that's honestly just for starters. Now that we have the banking crisis, who knows if that is going to uh, lead to even more downside. Forget the downside for one second because today we have an important development and everyone, no matter what you are trading, should be paying attention to this right now as the main catalyst for what the markets are going to do for the next several weeks at least. So again, bearish below, bullish above, and then the head and shoulders. Now, if we closed above 360 or a 394, which I have right in here, and in post market, she is at 396 now. But if we close above 394, which is that, look at, we zoom in here on an hourly chart, closed at, what was it? <clears throat> Excuse me, 396. We are above, look, and look how perfectly it came in and tested that that neckline of that head and shoulders and is now taking off or at least for now taking off here's the one caveat it is options expiration week it is institutional game playing week and it's a quad witch so there is a whole lot of stuff going on the institutions do not want anyone who plays options to get their money they will whip the market around and they will make sure that you do not get paid. <laughs> so um, just be aware that this could easily fake out. Now, will it close the week above this is very important. Um, I think it's signaling that it is. And if it does, and we'll see what we get on the Monday's open, but if it does close the week above this head and shoulder line, we are going to get a pretty significant rally to the upside. Um, how big of a rally, you might ask? Well, let's take a look here. So if we take a gander at this gap I left open here, it's about 408, and then we have an important pivot point. So we're just going to go ahead and call it 410 across the board for starters, which, hap which happens to coincide with somewhat of a measured move from high to low here, we take this and we look at that, we measure this, it's pretty much up at 410, the big fat round even number, and markets love to go back and test big fat round even numbers. Now, let's get rid of this thing. If we really start to resume uptrend, I think that this thing's got a ways to go. I think it's obviously going to be whipsaw. It's going to be all over the place. We're in a recession. The markets don't have to show that just yet. But the Fed is quietly doing QE, uh, I think $2 trillion of it now. And they pretty much proved at every point that they're going to backstop things. Markets like to hear that, at least for a while. So what's happening? And what did we say, by the way, over the past two weeks? What, what's happening? It comes down, fakes people out, just runs a big test of this downsloping trend line. Okay. And then what does it do? Rips up on, on oper, Operation uh, Options X <laughs> this week, fakes everyone out, doesn't let the put sellers get their money, and then starts resuming the uptrend, which, by the way, Look at that, we're into May, right? Maybe we get some fuckery, and then we, we're off to the races at about 450, right? Coming into summer. I think that is where 
you'll probably see some type of turn going into the summer and then the fall. Um, that's just historically what you're seeing. However, that is what you're likely going to get. Um, and that is a scenario where if that happens, let's go over to Bitcoin real quick. I'm going to make the case for this market potentially getting such a such a huge rip. Um, and look, it doesn't have to happen, but it starts out and Bitcoin just rips up, right? Fills this gap at 2,900, comes back down a little bit, and then shoots back up, tests this, and we're in May, right? Fills this gap at 3,500, hangs out for a little bit. It's got a lot of work to do around here. But look at this. We're in July. We're doing work. We're doing work. And we're getting a blow-off top. We're getting a blow-off top in August. And we got one big gap to fill up here at 53 at about 5300 on the on bitcoin btc futures okay people probably think that's crazy but that is a scenario that can very likely happen if the fed gives enough promise on backstopping financial markets and people are just piling into the market once again that could ultimately be where things ultimately top out for a very, very long time. And obviously this is just the bullish bullish scenario. So this is like, okay, um, melt up before a big crash or a big, big bear um, turn. But that that is certainly the case uh, or certainly could be the case. That would take the S&P 500 probably at about, let's see here take the S&P 500 probably up to probably about 45. Yeah. Be at about 45. Yep. Look at that. 450. So we'll probably be at 450 on the SPY, maybe a little higher. Um, I don't even know if we could get all-time highs. That's just a crazy scenario, but it certainly can happen. Um, again, that's that's just one scenario. The down scenario we get back down, we start closing candles and confirming below that trend line again. And we're going to be heading towards 365 for starters. We'll see what we get. And then ultimately we're going much lower and I'll have numbers when we get there or when we're approaching that scenario. But for right now, guys, let's take it for what it is. And, uh, Let's get into the lazy day trader channel, guys. It's always such a pleasure to be doing this. Um, this is the fall of Rome, March 16th, 2023. Um, have a great track record so far. And I'm commenting throughout the day uh, what's happening in the markets. The bulls need to stay above 388 and 389.40 to resume upside today. And what did they do? They did exactly that. Now, they stayed above and look what happened. They got to that head and shoulders neckline and now they're closing above. We had some lazy day trade setups. These are very easy to follow um, and they hit and they work out eight to nine times out of 10, or at least so far. So stick around and you might see how often they work out. Uh, none of them hit today, but that's okay because we did have one that I called out throughout the channel, which is the benefits of being in the channel, I am doing intraday charting, intraday market commentary uh, all the time. So here we go. There's a high risk spy uh, zone. And I wanna show you guys exactly what happened today. Okay, so here it is, the spy zone 385.95 to 384.75. And I'm giving you where it's wrong. Now, I understand it's a wide zone today, but the problem is we have to accommodate on the SPY for um, just the increase in volatility, right? So usually I can pretty much pinpoint where the markets are going to bounce and where they're going to take off. Um, however, today, really just it was a wide zone. But I want to show you this because 385.95, 
Let's move this up a little bit. You get it, 386. Look how close it came. The low of this candle was 386.29, and she took off for the rest of the day. So um, left us at the altar pretty much there. Uh, nothing you can really do about it. Um, you know, commenting, tech was strong today. Gold and silver was strong today. Um, and the spy just kind of took off. USO, I had another one. We were going to long USO starting at 57.73. Now let's go over to the USO chart. USO had a huge, huge reversal day. And uh, so, did, so did pretty much all the commodities. Let's go, let's take this down to a 10 minute. Look how close we got to our entry here. So this is what? At 10 a.m., this is the trade we really, really want, right? Morning traders, let's get in, let's get out. This thing would have came down into the number and would have gave us that trade. It did not, that's okay, uh, we move on. So I volatility was starting to dry up and it was obviously a bullish tape, but boom, keep AMD on your radar. We're gonna short AMD soon. It's slow, however, this is going to be a short that's eventually should uh, be the top or near the top of day for AMD. So what was the zone? Traders can start shorting at 95.50. Great level at 96.55. Okay, so let's let's di let's dive into AMD here because I want to show you where I got that 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 number from but first let's let's just pinpoint this short so here you are you maybe did a, a small a smaller portion of the position at 9550 and then it goes up it goes up it goes up 9655 larger portion so i showed everyone what the uh the payout was for me uh wasn't ideal i would have liked a lot more on it but nonetheless <clears throat> excuse me you should have had a 96 um entry or better, right? Maybe a 9620 entry if you position size light here and then higher up here. So this came down, it paid you out. And by the way, if you just wanted to take the scalp off here, hold the second, hold the second, hold the second, look what that did. I mean, that gave you an amazing trade right there. Okay, the numbers work, guys, and I'm gonna show you how they work and how I did it. So look at this weekly fib level and look where it comes in i'm just that's close enough for government work but look at where this came in right here and we zoom this into a 10 minute okay and let's just pretend it's 96.55 because i think it's a little little lower just because i didn't take the time to plug in the measurements but look at that okay that was literally the pit pit stop for the morning and afternoon, and it gave you the short trade. What did I say? Great level at 96.55. And then there's a third line of defense that never got there, but that's also the stop, okay? So traders could have loaded up on the first one, did a heavier position at the great level, and then perhaps a third, but you could have also just waited for the great level, and that would have paid you out almost immediately. So great stuff in the live room, guys. That brings us to, let's see here. I think we're at a 90% win rate so far. Um, it's coming up on a month running this. And uh, it's it's been a great ride so far, guys. So um, thank you to everyone following along. If you have any questions, please DM me on Twitter. Um, uh, happy to help you guys out. And I will be creating an educational video eventually. So for beginners, beginner traders who don't know how to day trade but are looking to get into it, uh, as well as maybe beginner traders um, who just need help understanding how my methodology and how this day trading methodology works, happy to help out. So see you guys tomorrow, bright and early in the morning. See you on the charts. Thanks again. Bye.